Thank you, choir. The Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for this wonderful morning. I want to give him the praise and glory. Pastor, thank you for the Sunday school. One thing I picked this morning that is very crucial is that he's the head of all principalities. No matter the kind of principalities facing us, we have a head of all what? Of all principalities. Principalities of economy or whatever. There is a head of all that principalities. Who can subject them to his own ways and whims and caprices. So we don't have any reason to fear. Why? Because we have a father who is the head of what? Of all principalities this morning. So we are not moved by what we see, nor by what we hear. But we are moved by what? By the word of the Lord. So be encouraged this morning. Whatever is happening, we have a head of all principalities. Who is able to do more than we can think or reason. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads to pray this morning. Father, we want to thank you for the opportunity we have to share your word together with your people this morning. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy that has seen us thus far. As we look into your word this morning, let there be freedom. Let there be liberty. Let there be deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Through your word, let our life be transformed. Let our life be changed. Thank you, precious Father. For in Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Praise the Lord. I'm also a man under authority. Please, um, can you just put me on 30 minutes, please? But uh, damn it, please, put me on 30 minutes. God bless you. Hallelujah. Now, this morning, I'm very sure a lot of you not know that the theme for this month is a month of unspeakable joy. And this morning, we want to look at the topic, knowing the God of unspeakable joy. Knowing the God of unspeakable joy. Let's take our journey from 1 Peter 1 and verse number 8. 1 Peter 1 and verse number 8. That is our main, main focus this morning. 1 Peter 1 and verse number 8. Can you please project 1 Peter 1 and verse number 8, please, quickly. Whom having not seen, ye love. In whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing. Ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, the people being talked about here are people who are walking by what? By faith. The Bible says, whom have not seen. They have not seen the master. They have not seen, the Bible says, ye love. In whom thou now ye see him, not yet believing. Ye rejoice with what? With joy unspeakable and full of glory. Now, it takes an understanding of knowing for you to have that joy that is unspeakable. It takes a knowing to be able to know, have that joy that is unspeakable. I'm sure all of us know what joy unspeakable means. A, a joy that, that comes out of you that is unexplainable. That goes beyond the, the normal thing that ordinarily will have happened to you. Now, talking about knowing, the definition of knowing said showing or suggesting that one has knowledge or awareness that is secret or known to only a few people. Now, the knowing we are talking about this morning, knowing about God, 
is a knowledge or understanding that is what? Secret. That is what? Known to only few people. Now, what that means in essence is that for you to explain this joy unspeakable, the knowledge that you must have is knowledge that is in the secret place that can only be tapped by what? By few people. So the knowing we are talking about is a deep intimacy with God. A deep intimacy with God that is not, not common with every other person. That is only when you can be able to do what? Have the joy unspeakable. Praise the Lord. Daniel 11, 32, very quickly. Daniel 11, verse 32, very quickly. Daniel 11, verse 32. They that do know they are God. They shall be what? They shall be, okay, as such as you can lay against the covenant shall be corrupt by plastic. But people that do know they are God, they shall be what? Be strong. And do what? They will do exploit. Part of that exploit is the joy that comes, that joy unspeakable. But there is one thing that you must know. That will say, they that you know they are God. There is a knowing that God desires that you must know of him for you to be able to have that experience of that full joy. Amen. Praise the Lord. And knowing happens through perception, through reason, and through emotion. Knowing happens through what? Perception, what you perceive. Through reason and through emotional attachment. So we must be able to know this God to be able to have the fullness of that joy that He has promised us. Amen. Now, how do I experience this knowing God of unspeakable joy? Number one, it takes an encounter. To know this God of unspeakable joy. It takes what? It takes an encounter. It takes an encounter. Each of us at a very point in time, we have an encounter with Christ. Some of us gave our life to Jesus at a certain point in time. But what we are calling you unto is deeper than just a fleet encounter with Christ. It takes a real encounter. And our character we are looking at this morning is Brother Moses. Don't forget that at the beginning of his life, his mother had taught him that, oh, you are an Hebrew. You know, God, his mother has told him everything about him being an Hebrew and all those things. But he never had an encounter until he had an experience with God. Let's read Esther 3, verse 5. He had a real encounter with God. Until that, he had not really been able to see, to know actually the kind of God he's serving. Don't forget, he thought by his own understanding, if he killed the Egyptian, he become a savior. Until you have a real encounter with God. Let's back up a little bit to verse, um, from verse 1. Let's quickly read from verse 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. Don't forget, for the past 80 years, he has not had an encounter in which the angel of the Lord has appeared unto him. Even though he has an understanding that he's an Hebrew. He has an understanding that he has some benefit as an Hebrew, as an Israelite. 
But until he had this encounter, that is when he was able to know the God he was serving. And the Lord appeared unto him in the flame of fire out of the bush. And he looked. And behold, the bush burned with fire. And the bush was not consumed. Verse 3. And Moses said, I love this. I will now turn aside and see this great side why the bush is not burnt. Until you are ready to turn aside, you may not have an encounter of that knowing. Hello, somebody. He said, I will now turn aside. He could have said, it doesn't matter, the bush is burning. I don't have to do anything. But the Bible says, he turned aside. Until you turn aside, you may not be able to have that true encounter of knowing him. And see this great side where the bush is not born. Verse 4. And when the Lord, can you see that? And when the Lord saw that, he turned aside to see There is a place for you to do what? To turn aside. Bible says, and when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the bit of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. He may not have that encounter of knowing deeply God, except he turned aside. And God is also looking for you to do what? To turn aside so that he can turn himself, you can be able to know him and be able to see him. You want to really have an encounter with God? There is a place of word of turning aside. You really want to know him? There is a place of word of turning aside to see what he will do. cannot keep to go on your own lane. You must be able to force a little and say, ah, this side that I'm seeing, there's something about it. I need to turn back. I need to turn aside. And the Bible says, when the Lord saw that he turned aside. So God is also waiting for you to do what? To turn aside so that there can be a deep encounter between you and him and be able to know him I'm able to partake of that joy unspeakable. Amen. Amen. Let's just ask 9, 1 to 8. I see another person that had an encounter with God. That is what I saw that was turned to Paul. Like Brother Moses, he also knows about the law. He knew about everything. But until he has this encounter with Christ, He did not actually, actually have the knowing that he ought to have of God. It was that knowing that made him to realize that, ah, I've gone far away from him. I need to be in him. That was why he said that I may know him. He was still ready to know him the more. So there must be a place of encounter where you are able to turn aside for you to be able to have a, to, to know, actually know this God of unquenchable joy. Amen. Number two, it takes a relationship to know him. It takes what? Relationship to know him. It takes relationship between you and God to know him. Genesis 15 verse 4. Looking at Brother Abraham, Brother Abraham this morning. Genesis 15 verse 4 very quickly. Genesis 15 verse 4. Genesis please. 15 verse 4. Okay, let me run down to the scripture. Genesis 15, 4, Genesis 17, 1 to 4. 
Verse 21, 1 to 3. John 21, 12 to 19. Luke 10, 38 to 42. And now, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine hair, but it that shall come forth out of thine own bower shall be thine hair. Next verse. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, Show that thy seed be. It takes a relationship for you to have the kind of encounter. It showed to us that Abraham had a relationship with God. It takes a relationship for you to be able to know him. It takes a relationship with God. You must be ready to have that relationship with him on a daily basis. For you to be able to know this God that we are talking about. It takes relationship in God. Genesis 21, verse 1 to 3. It's about relationship. For you to know him. Now, these are the experiences they had based on relationship with God. The Bible said, I love Sarah as he has said, and Lord did unto Sarah as what? As he has spoken. Why? Because there is a relationship between Abraham and God. That miracle you are looking for, that joy unspeakable that you are looking for, you need to have a personal relationship with him to be able to know him more so that you can fully experience that joy that is bringing your way. Amen. John 21 verse 12 to 19 looking at brother Peter. Relationship. John 21 verse 12 to 19 very quickly. Jesus said unto them, there have been some things before, before this. We saw Brother Peter saying, I'm going out fishing. Even though don't forget that he has had a relationship before now with the master. But in air, God, Jesus said unto them, come and dine. And none of the disciples just ask him, who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord. Now, they could know that it was the Lord because why? They have a relationship. There's a knowing there. They had what? A relationship. Knowing that what? It was the Lord. That was a knowledge they have. So you must have the knowledge of that God. Amen. Luke 10, 38 to 42. Very quickly. Luke 10, 38 to 42. We're talking about knowing the God of unspeakable joy. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him to her house. Relationship. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and had his word. But Martha was kumba about much serving. Service is good. Hello? Service is what? Service is good. But God desires more relationship than service. If you have a relationship with him, your service to him will be very easy. Your service to him will be what? Will be made very, very easy. Because why? You know what he wants you to do. You know why, why, why you want to go. And came to him and said, Lord, does thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Be it out there for that she helped me. Now, verse 41. Because I just answered and said unto her, Matter, matter, thou art careful and trouble about many things. But one thing is needful. What is that that is needful? Relationship with the master. And Mary had chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. 
The father is looking for what? Relationship. And through that relationship, you'll be able to know him more. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Number three, it takes total surrender to know him. It takes total surrender to be able to know this God of unspeakable joy. Don't forget, the joy we are talking about is not just common. That joy we are talking about is not common. So it takes what? It takes total surrender. I'm sure we always sing, I surrender. Oh, yes, good. Beautiful. But in actual fact, when it comes to certain, certain, part, certain part of your life, and he wants you to do certain things, are you ready to truly surrender unto him? Amen. Now that um, the economy has um, made petrol is now 900. Now, okay, someone said 1,050. 1,050. Okay, last one I bought was 1,050 anyway. But I think in both is 900. And God is telling you, stay in Nigeria, we bless you. And you have opportunity to jack back. Will you surrender to his will? It's a sincere question. Will you surrender to his will? If you truly want to know him, you must be ready to surrender to his will. Why? Because he holds everything about you. That scripture said we are completed in him. Now, if you are completed in, in, in him, then he must have control over your life. You must be ready to surrender to him. You must be ready to let him instruct you and teach you the way to go. Hello, sometimes we should start with ourselves when we al don't allow God to have his way in our lives. Not everything that looks like gold is good. But for us, we always want to look at that. That, that, that thing is good. That is the gold. The question is, is that a desire of the Father for you? So, for us to actually know him, having a knowing that can bring that joy that is everlasting, we must be ready to have a total surrender to the master. Romans 12, 1 to 2. We must surrender in everything. Romans 12, 1 to 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So God, and be not conformed to this world. And be not what? Be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed, what? To this world. Jackpot is not an option. Be not conformed to this world. But be it transformed by renewing your word of your mind. That knowing that you are having bring about a renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't forget Brother Isaac. He thought Egypt was the way. But God said, no, you not go to Egypt. Stay here. Surrender to my will. I will prosper you. And we, we saw from that experience 
that Isaac, the Bible said, Isaac saw in Jera. And he did what? There was increase upon his life. I don't know whom I'm talking to this morning. I don't know what your plans are. But surrender to his will. Let him have his way. Surrender to his will. Let him have his way. Let him have his way. James 4 from verse 7 to 9. James 4 verse 7 to 9. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. To who? Not Pastor Akinladi. Not Pastor Adio. Said, submit yourself, therefore, to who? To God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Sur I want to use that word. Surrender yourself, therefore, to God. Those suggestions that are coming to you that are not in line with the will of God are the devil that God is asking you to resist. The Bible says, and he will do what? He will flee from you. You want to know God like and bring that everlasting joy into your life. Surrender to his will. When you continue to know him, have knowledge of him, surrender what? To his will. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Psalm 46, verse 10. Quickly. I think I have less than five minutes anymore. Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still. I know that I am God. I will be exalted among the Eden. I will be exalted in the heart. God is saying, be still in me. Surrender to me. Be still in what? In me. Be still. Don't allow the first situation to enable you to take some wrong decision. Be still. Throw the lua. Fisuru duro de. Be still. Be still in him. The Bible says, eat that we come, we come. You will not tarry. So be still in him. Be still in him. Surrender to his authority. Be still. And finally, it takes the help of the Holy Spirit to have the knowing that will make us to have that unchangeable joy. It takes the help of the Holy Spirit. It takes the help of the Holy Spirit. It takes the help of the Holy Spirit. John 14 verse 26 John 14, verse 26. John 14, verse 26, very quickly. All right. But the comfort that with the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. Since you want to know. God is saying here that he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So if you want to know more about him who is able to bring that unspeakable joy you need the help of the Holy Spirit. You need the help of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 26 to 27, very quickly. Romans 8, 26 to 27.
Likewise, the spirit, spirit helps also helps our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groan we cannot be uttered. It's the Spirit that helps us to know the mind of Christ. It's the Spirit that helps us to know the mind of God. John 16, 3. John 16, 3. John 16, verse 3. And this thing will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. Sorry, I don't think that's the. That's it. All right. Let's go to Luke 7 11 to 16. Luke 7 11 to 16. Sorry, how many, how many minutes do I have left, please? Luke 10, 11 to 16. Luke 7. I want to tell you about the story there. Oh, oh my God. Praise God. Now, Luke 7, 11 to 16. Now, in the life of a woman, it appears that all hope has ended. They were carrying his son out of the town for burial. But something happened that brought unspeakable joy in the life of that woman. And why? Why did that happen? Because he met, he met the master on the way. The master that knew the source of that unchangeable joy. And it came to pass that after that, he went to a city called Nine. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother. What a terrible situation. And she was a widow, number two. The son of his mother. And she was also a widow. And when the Lord saw her, he, had, he met on the way, he met the master on the way. He had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. And he came and touched the bear. God, we touch your situation this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. He came and touched the bear. Let her bear him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead, start up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. What kind of joy do you think we have in that situation? That is what talk about about unspeakable joy. There was a total restoration of life. Why? Because they met a man that knew the source. When we have a relationship with the master. It made our journey to be easy. It makes our situation to be turned around. Why? Because we know him. Finally, I will just tell a story of a scripture and then we rise to pray. When the Israelites was on a, they were on a journey to the promised land, they got a place called Mara. The Bible made us to know that the water of that place was what? Was very bitter. There was no solution to their circumstances and situation at that point in time. 
So they need something that will bring an unspeakable joy to their lives. And God told Moses to throw a stick to that water. And that situation was turned around. And there was joy among the children of Israel. I don't know what your situation looks like this morning. You might have been saying that, they are even talking about this unspeakable joy. I have no, I'm not experiencing it. There is a matter in my situation and circumstances. God needs to touch me this morning. God needs to touch the salt of my water this morning. So that I can have that experience of that unspeakable joy. I have been relating with him. I have had an encounter with him. But it appears that this unspeakable joy is not happening in my life. This morning God is ready to do more than I can think or reason. We are going to pray this morning. I want you to rise upon your feet. I want you to rise upon your feet this morning. We are going to address every matter that's not causing joy to flow in our lives. Everything that stands like Mara that's not allowing the source of joy to flow in our lives. I want to pray for yourself this morning. Say, Lord, every Mara in my life that's not allowing that joy to come. Today, Lord, address it, O God. Address this situation, O God of heaven. Every matter in my life that is not allowing this joy to flow. Lord, I have known you through encounter. Lord, I have a relationship with you. I have surrendered my life to you, God. But there is still this matter that is not allowing me to have that overflowing joy. This morning, O God of heaven, address this matter in my life. Lord, address this matter in my life. Address this situation in my life this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me add that overflowing joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me have that overflowing joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, let me have that overflowing joy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rebo shikalabarandra mashingelebo. Manglebo rebo shikelebo. Manglebo rebo shikelebo. Lord, that overflowing joy. That joy that's unquenchable. I receive it this morning. That joy that's unquenchable, Lord of heaven. I receive it this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want to hold someone very close to you. Get a neighbor. Get a neighbor. We have a God who is head of all principalities and power. Everything that's not making happen to experience that joy of God, that overflowing joy. This morning, we uproot them today. In the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray for that person. Those matter in his life, in our life, are not making him to experience that joy. We uproot it today in the mighty name of Jesus. That situation, that circumstances, are not making her to experience that joy, that overflowing joy. That joy unspeakable. Lord, this morning we uproot them today in the mighty name of Jesus. That which is not allowing my brother, my sister to experience that joy unspeakable this morning. Lord, we uproot. Lord, we uproot this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we uproot this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, they are uprooted today in the mighty name of Jesus. Rebo shikala barandra mashingelebo, rebo mali ge 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 manglebo rebo shikala ba, rebo mali ge 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 manglebo rebo shikelebo, rebo mali ge 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 ge
Rebo shikala barandra mashingelebo. Rebo shikelebo randra mashingelebo. Rebo shikelebo. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I'm going to pray for that brother and that sister. Lord, we want to know you more. Heaven has not allowing us to have to know you. All those hindrances, all those little, little voices that is destroying our vine. Today, let them be uprooted in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we want to know you more. Heaven has not allowing us to be able to know more of you. We uproot them today in the mighty name of Jesus. Every hindrance, we uproot them today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every hindrance, we uproot them today. In the mighty name of Jesus. We want to know more of you. We want to know you more. We want to know you more. So I can experience that unquenchable joy. I ask my Father, my God, today. The Lord of heaven, remove everything. Not allow me to know you, Lord. Every hindrance. Every hindrance. Every hindrance, every hindrance, every hindrance, in the mighty name of Jesus. Manklebo rebo shikala ba 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 ba. Rebo malike ge 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 ge. Remove every hindrance that not allow us to know.